Uh, so Patrick is going to be presenting uh, on the topic of three video trends for 2021. He's the principal at Patch Media, Patch Bay Media. Patrick is an award-winning video producer and author of upcoming book, The Video First Era, The People and Platforms Powering Next Generation Video Communication. In this conversation, he'll share uh, how to beat Zoom fatigue with uh, new video tools and tactics, how to s create social video content without cameras or scripts, and the best performing social format uh, you should be taking advantage of. This is stuff we all need to know and take advantage of. So without further ado, uh, we have uh, Patrick Frank. Go ahead, the floor is yours. All right, awesome, cool. Well, thanks so much, Sean. Sean and I got connected a couple months ago in a uh, productized services uh, community icebreaker platform video thing, which is this fun kind of uh, speed networking kind of idea. But uh, anyway, so it's good to meet everybody here. Um, and we'll, so real quick, we'll, we'll do this choose your own adventure style. So I have uh, three trends that we're going to talk about. We're going to talk about short video. We're going to talk about virtual offices and we're going to talk about asynchronous video. So where should I start? Someone, uh, someone tell me where to start. Short video. video. Short video. <laughs> I see That's this and I'm like, what? I'm what is that? Yeah. <laughs> All right, cool. So let's talk mm -hmm. about, let's talk about short video. So in the last six months, uh, think about all these different tools and platforms that have been released. So I'm talking about Instagram reels. I'm talking about LinkedIn stories. TikTok has exploded and it's actually, uh, users are spending more time on TikTok than they are on Facebook actually now, just the flipping happened there. Twitter released fleets at the end of last year. And what did all these things have in common? Well, they're all short videos, 15 to 60 seconds. And this stories format is really cool because it gives you a different level of awareness, right? People, there are some people that just watch stories now. There are, with the algorithms being what they are, you know, your organic reach suffers more and more as more people are using it, as more ads are getting placed in the feeds and things like that. So I really think there's a big opportunity for you to be using stories for your business. Um, Google has also announced that they are testing having short videos show up in search results so you can try it now like some of the examples that i saw in tech crunching places were like if you typed in green bay packers you would start seeing some story style short videos at the top of that search result in this example i have here is like like rice or something i found this on on, on the screenshot so the, the short video opportunity is big and before where you were only going to see those snaps, Instagram stories, that sort of thing within the platform. Now Google is going to start to serve up some of that stuff in the results. So that's a huge deal. Um, so is that, one thing is that, I'm yeah, sorry, Patrick, is that yeah. like in the 15 to 20 second range? Is that what you call short? Different platforms have different limits and things like mm -hmm. that. I know for instance, LinkedIn a story length is 20 seconds uh, on Instagram is 15 seconds and Instagram lets you kind of link multiple stories together. So you okay. can run like a 45 second piece that would take you know, three stories to get through. So, um, and I, I really love this idea of, of a post plus stories con content strategy, right? So with my company at video calls, we just changed this at the end of last year. So now we include two versions of every order. So we're going to deliver you a post length video, which is one to three minutes. Most of the time that's in square dimensions for your Facebook and Instagram feed. Um, Facebook and LinkedIn, Instagram feeds a little bit shorter that, that has a 60 second cap, but then we're also going to give you a 20 or 30 second stories clip. So you can post that to your story as well. What do you do at the end of your story? You're going to say, Hey, check out the post, watch the full thing. Right. And then on the full thing, you could say, check out my podcast episode, sign up for my newsletter, mm -hmm. something like that. So it's kind of like cascading content, right? Where the content discovery happens on a story. They might follow you. Um, they might want to see what that full post looks like, and then you can uh, push them out to other places. And these are vertical, mostly verticals, right? Mobile yeah, I mean, th with our with our service, we, we we know what all the formats need to be. We can take care of it. But yeah, yes. stories formats are vertical. That is true, and most of the posts are square. So that's generally mm -hmm. what we're doing. These longer posts are one to three minutes. Those are square videos. The stories ones are generally vertical. Uh, the one opportunity here that's really interesting is, is Instagram Reels. So these are 30 seconds, and this is their TikTok competitor. Uh, I read a story in, in New York Times, and, and um, I can 
find the link. And um, I wrote a blog post about all this stuff too this week that I can link out and you can kind of like get some more uh, detail on the research and check out where, where these sources came from. But um, Instagram has been reaching out to its power users, its influencers and other people to try to get them to use reels. And this person basically shared all of the input insights that this rep this from Instagram gave her. And uh, it, it's being so it's being pushed hard so much by Instagram that if you post a reel, then the rest of your posts for that week will get boosted in the organic resor- results. So if you're not using reels, you're going to get punished. If you are using reels, you're going to get rewarded. So they have a ridiculous, I wrote this down. This is their Instagram suggested posting schedule is three posts per week for your feed. Uh, so that could be reels or IGTV, eight to 10 stories per week, preferably two a day, four to seven reels a week, one to three IGTV videos, which are longer than a minute per week. That is a ton of content. Her version of a realistic content schedule is one to two stories a day, one reel per week, and then one IGTV per week. So the whole idea here is consistency. That the, the algorithm is also going to reward you for consistency. So if you can get one video a week out there, if you can do three posts a week on whatever your preferred platform is, I, I think this goes for all the platforms that you will be rewarded for that, where you will be showing up more in organic results. So it's even something I'm trying to be better at. Like I make videos for other people for a living, so I'm not generally posting my own stuff, but I'm trying to be better at getting a, a video per week out on LinkedIn. I'm a little bit behind. I haven't, I haven't restarted it since the new year, but I was, I was doing pretty good last week. So I think this whole idea is just, you know, you want to be top of mind. Uh, your content needs to be relevant for your audience. And that's how you're going to grow, especially if you're a coach or you're offering uh, consulting services. The more people see you, the more they think of you when they have a need. And I think that posting um, regularly on social media, on, on one or two platforms that you've determined are your favorite and the best for your business is going to be really important. Uh, any questions about short video before I move on to uh, the next part? No? All right, what are we doing next? Virtual offices or asynchronous video? Asynchronous. Asynchronous. Okay, great. So um, everyone's sick of Zoom meetings. No offense, Sean. Uh, We have too many meetings. And the reason we have too many meetings is because a lot of us, maybe not this group, but a lot of people came from offices where there's just a culture of having a whole lot of meetings. And uh, so one of the things that I, I kind of have been really focused on as I've been working on this book that Sean mentioned is how can we have better meetings? How can we have fewer meetings? How can we fix Zoom fatigue? Because I think uh, it's not a given, but I think it is. A, there's a very strong case that we are going to have remote work forever, that offices are going, offices as we know them are going to go away. Offices will still exist as a place for when people need to come together, they can do that, but it's not gonna be a requirement to be in the office five days a week. I think that that is a pretty good, um, that is a future that I want personally, and that I think is possible. So uh, how are we going to work together and and get that same amount of of collaboration um, and do good work? But one of the the things too is that like meeting, work did not get done at work. You would go to work, you would start working on something, you get interrupted, you get pulled into a meeting. Like how are you gonna get any work done, right? And so I think that's one of the opportunities and the advantages of remote work is that we can build our own schedules. We can carve out time where we focus and, and write and do the work that we need to do. And then we can meet um, as needed. And it's a better working model. But the problem is we're taking what we used to do in the office and we're pushing it onto remote work. And it's that's what's killing us with our Zoom fatigue. So what I have found is there are a couple ways that we can use to how that we can remove Zoom meetings from our lives. And as a video person, one of my favorite things is to use asynchronous video tools. Have, has anyone heard of Loom or Descript? Yeah? So, hey, Zeus, what do you think? How, which one have you used? And, and, uh, and tell me about your experience. Uh, I started using Loom when it was free. Uh, and I think you could get like, I can't remember if it was like a 10 videos or something like that. and. And I stopped using it, went back, and now they're charging. Uh, 
Um, I think you can only do three free or something like that. But I, I like Loom because it allows you to do a short presentation on your computer and kind of have your profile on there or your face on there while you're talking through the video. So yeah, with Loom and, and, and the free version of Loom, I, the, it, it's kind of and it's good to know that you can only do certain things because it kind of forces you to stay within that short video uh, portion of it. Cool. I'm glad you played with it. So um, I think I signed up for Loom's annual plan last year and it was about a hundred bucks for a year. And I think that's totally worth it. Oh yeah. Um, so here's, I was working on this video with my team last week and I can't play any sound in Prezi video right in my presentation right now, but um, uh, I'll play a little bit of, it, bit of it in a minute, but um, I could have gotten on the phone with them and kind of talked through like, Hey, when I have this, when this part of this video comes up, you know, I want this to happen or something like that. So instead I just sent them a video and you can see my little head down here. And I basically just said, you know, with my mouse and stuff, I said, Hey, I like this part over here, but can you fix this? Can you move this over here and do, you know, this sort of thing. And so I think that especially for uses like feedback and, um, updates, I think asynchronous video is way better than scheduling yet another meeting. You know, meetings are never going to be less than 30 minutes, 20 or 30 minutes. And if you just need someone to weigh in on something and it's not a fire that needs to be put out because your business is like going to break or something like that, uh, just send a video, just send a video. And some of the reasons why. So there's this idea of, of asynchronous and synchronous being our time and my time, right? So our time is a traditional in-person meeting. We're collaborating, we're working on something together. Those definitely have a time and place. But my time is working when I want, how I want, and I can be focused on the task at hand that, that I need to focus on. And so I think that we can be more courteous to each other by using tools like Loom and Descript to send videos to just remove if we can, if we can make other people not have to be at a meeting with us, um, we're going to have a better work relationship, I believe. The other uh, advantages to this are double speed. So if I send a Loom video, I can watch it on my own time and I can watch it at 1.2, 1.5, 2x speed so I can get through it faster, right? So now all of a sudden that video that was 15 minutes or that meeting was 15 minutes, I can do it in seven minutes, you know, 10 minutes, something like that. A lot can of these you do, tools. Can you do the same thing with Bomb Bomb? Bomb Bomb. Uh, I don't know about Bomb Bomb. Um, I don't know too much about Bomb Bomb. I know like Warm Welcome Bomb Bomb. Like there's a couple other platforms that are really kind of sales heavy and like personalized and things like that. Uh, I assume that is the case because I definitely think the the two kind of things that all these platforms are adding are transcripts and uh, timing, like respeed. And so uh, if they don't offer that, I think they probably will soon. Um, commenting. So instead of watching the video and then sending an email and then, you know, copying somebody else and then they lost the link to the video, blah, 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 all the conversation happens right there, right? I add a particular timestamp, I can leave a message that says, hey, right here, can this happen? Or hey, you know, you talked about this, here's what I think, blah, blah, blah. Uh, we need to bring in another coworker so we can tag them in it, you know, just at their username if they're in the team with us, sends a notification, hey, you got to watch this video you got mentioned at minute four. So go ahead and weigh in. So and again, they can, they'll do that on their own time. Yes, sir. Question, uh, does the recipient also have to have a Loom or, or an account? Or no. can just watch it mm -hmm. in any format? Mm -hmm. Now with the tagging and stuff like that and working in teams, maybe that's some additional functionality, but um, you, know, you can send a Loom video to anybody. They don't have to have a Loom account. Okay. Yeah, good question. Uh, and like, like in, in here, yeah, it, it's shareable. So that's it for asynchronous video. And so the last one is uh, virtual offices. So this is kind of new to me. And I thought it was kind of hokey at first, but I actually attended a Christmas party on this platform called Gather or Gather Town. And it was awesome. Um, so the idea with, with Zoom is that we can see each other and we can talk and collaborate and things like that. But there's just like, there's, there's a lot of things that are missing from the energy of an office, right? And so what these virtual offices are trying to do is they're trying to create a spatial, physical place uh, on your computer that you can work, that you can have events and meetings and things like that, that operate in a similar way to being in an office. So for instance, in TeamFlow, this, this particular platform, it's very much 
looks like your, your WeWork or something like that. Really clean, modern. You can see it here, there's people sitting at co-working desks. There's like a little plant right here. And so the idea with all these is like, if I wanna to talk to someone, I literally have to walk over to them and then we can have a conversation. You can create virtual rooms where people are going to have their own meeting in there and then you would know like not to go in there or they could invite you in there or something like that. Um, in that virtual room, you might set up a virtual whiteboard or include videos and things like that. Think about the last time you were in a conference room and you set up like a war room, right? You got post-its everywhere and poster board and you're using the whiteboard, but then like that project was over and you had to like erase it all and you had to throw away all the post-its and stuff like that. You took a bunch of pictures. Now you could just save that room. And if you need to go back to that war room, you could just pick it right back up again where you left off. You can have an unlimited amount of things. So it's very cool. Um, and it also, it, it's trying to add a little bit of that serendipity back into bumping into people at the office, because that's the thing that people are missing the most, right? It's like, I miss seeing people, I miss casually running into people. And so there are a lot of these virtual offices that are trying to um, infuse that back into remote work. Uh, be working on documents together. And obviously you could do that in a virtual space like this, but I don't know, you know, it, it depends on... The, the idea here is that if you're working on a team, you're working with a team and everyone is working in similar hours, you're all going to have this open all day, right? So if you just need like a quick feedback on something, you just like walk your little avatar over to someone, ask them a question, then you can go back to your desk, go back to your couch with your virtual dog. You could also, I think what would be cool is if you, maybe once a week or something like that, you could hold, uh, you know, some kind of office hours presentation or something like that, bring all your different clients together create kind of a community aspect. That could be interesting and, as well. That'd be super cool, yeah. So, so Teamflow is, is pretty modern, uh, clean, yeah. Oh, so we've actually have, Avantage have purchased a, a platform exactly, no, it's not Teamflow, but it's another brand, but that's gonna be our, uh, might be an, a monthly event, but it's exactly the way you're describing it. And I've attended some of these, they're amazing. Yeah, so it's fun, right? Just as a stage. I totally yeah, wrote it stage. off. I thought it was really lame and unnecessary. But yeah, I did a few of them and I'm like, this is right. very it's cool. different than Zoom. And you get to have, you know, one-to-one -one at a table, have a private conversation, or you can right. have you can table booths for, for vendors. Right. So you can have vendor booths and yeah. also stage. I've seen them for virtual. Yeah, like you said, like I had seen them for virtual events and that I totally get the advantage of, right? Right. So, you know, it's set up with various tables and stuff. I can hover over someone's profile before I decide to sit down with them. Think about what you used to do in the real world, right? You'd see someone right. sitting there and you're like, am I going to go bother them? Do I have anything in common with them? This is awkward, right? Now they're sitting at the, at the table, which signals that they want to have a conversation with someone conversation. and you can hover over, look at their whole profile, find things to talk to them about. And then you sit down and you've already qualified them as someone that you want to talk to, that you have something in common with, whatever. So immediately you're starting off on a way better foot than in real life. So I think there's a real opportunity. There. Right, right. And yes. I just want to show you. So this is what gather looks like. Gather is like Zelda or Pokemon or something. Like it's just this really funny kind of like eight bit looking world. Um, and so I, I think it's really cool that all these different, platforms are coming out trying to figure out how to make remote work more enjoyable. Um, and so kind of like I talked about, so why virtual offices? So kind of like think about like office norms and stuff, right? You can go into a virtual office and you can lock the door as opposed to, you know, like I had a call with someone I was interviewing for my book. He's getting a million Microsoft Teams notifications as we're talking, just like ding, ding, ding. You know, it's hilarious. Um, I think if, we, if you turn off notifications, but you have like visual cues and spatial cues, right? You go work somewhere by yourself, that signals like, hey, like I'm going to be doing my thing. If you're working at a table, maybe working on something together, like we talked about, like the war room idea or something like that, um, it's more collaborative. Uh, again, creates that those moments of serendipity as you're walking around and bumping into people, having quick conversations. Uh, the collaboration, I think, is a lot better in these tools. Uh, you can bring in, like I said, um, Google Docs, YouTube videos, whatever, into these virtual spaces that everyone can interact with within the virtual world. So as opposed to having like a million different tabs open and like trying to figure out like how to make these things shareable and collaborative, it's all right there in your virtual space. Uh, and then the, the last thing would be to create different spaces, right? So if we needed more um, conference rooms, if we you know wanted to create uh, some kind of seated area, some kind of audience stage, if we wanted to host something. So it, you just are completely flexible with the kinds of spaces that you can create uh, on this platform. So uh, that's all I got. Uh, happy to take questions, but um, 
yeah, this was fun to talk to you guys and let me know how I can be helpful. So uh, yeah, and the presentation I did in this platform called Prezi, which I'm very impressed by, it's very cool. You guys ever heard of Prezi? So Prezi video is pretty neat. Um, and I'm gonna definitely be using this uh, as I'm talking.